Alcorn State alum, Otis Wansley highlights today's top HBCU Redskins of all time. Wansley played a vital role in helping the Redskins secure a victory in Super Bowl 17. Welcome back to Redskins Chronicles. I'm Amanda Mitchell, joined by Redskins historian Mike Richmond and former Redskin Otis Wansley, also known as O.T. Bill. Otis, talk to us about how you got that nickname. Oh, man. Um, I guess when I was coming into Carlisle, I uh, met a guy by the name of Dexter Manley. Um, <laughs> Dexter and I was getting off the plane to come to, come to Carlisle, get the training camp. And uh, one of the things he, he, you know, he saw me getting off and getting my bags, and he said, hey, 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 Bill, hey, Bill. You know, Dex is from Oklahoma, so everything is Bill, you know. And so as soon as I got off, I said, look, man, I'm looking for the same place you're looking for. Can we go together? Mm -hmm. You know, and ever since that day, uh, that name stuck, O.T. Bill. Did you have any nicknames when you were growing up? Um, I had a, a, a name in, in college, no, actually high school. Mm -hmm. High school, they gave me a name of Cowboy Wansley. Uh, because I was so bow-legged, you know, I mean, my leg was always bent. So uh, my, my high school coach named Billy Wayne Miller, uh, mm -hmm. who's passed on now, uh, uh, called me Cowboy. So let's back it up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're talking about high school. Tell us a bit about how you got into the great game of football. Well, I played junior, junior high school ball. And uh, uh, after my junior, my ninth grade year, I didn't want to play football anymore. And this guy by the name of Coach Miller, uh, came and, and, and knocked on my door and I knocked and asked my mom, you know, Miss Miss Wansley, uh, we think that Otis could, uh, you know, get a scholarship in college if he pursue, you know, f you know, athletics here, mm -hmm. particularly football. And my mother said to him, he said, you know, coach, um, it's really up to him, you know, but just go out there and ask his father. And my father was always in the yard doing things. And uh, he walked out there to my father. He said, Mr. Wansley, I want to talk to you about your son. You know, you got a minute. And so my father said, sure, absolutely. And I was just, you know, playing basketball in the yard, hooping around. And he walked up to my father and he said, uh, Mr. Wands, I really feel that your son Otis could have a, you know, get an opportunity to go to college and get an education if you pursue football. And, um, you know, and I was behind Coach Miller, like, no dad, you know, like, no dad. And, and unfortunately, my father said, sure, why don't you take him right now? And that's how I got started playing football. So I. I came on, I left with Coach Miller, and uh, I pra pra practice started at 2 o'clock, and I went out there and I had to get dressed, and I started playing football. From that point on, I've been playing football. A guy by the name of Coach Billy Wayne Miller, mm -hmm. who's passed on, who's one of the greatest football coaches in, in Mississippi at that particular time. So would you credit him with making you love the game? If you didn't want to get into it initially, what made you stick with it as if a If it had not been for Coach Miller and my brothers, uh, I probably would have never played football. Now, where did you play your college ball? Was Alcorn State? Alcorn State. I, I did go to um, uh, Alcorn State. In fact, in my junior year in high school, uh, I took a tr trip there. Just, you know, uh, one of my English teachers said, look, you might want to try Alcorn. It's a good school. So I went there on a weekend, and uh, it was a junior year, and uh, I kind of fell in love with Alcorn. And that's how I wound up going to Alcorn. What positions did you play there? I played running back. Play, play, uh, came in as a running back. Uh, there were several guys in front of me and uh, as a freshman, a guy by the name of Gusta Lee, who was one of the, the great all Knights there at Alcorn as a running back. So uh, I followed him after he uh, graduated from, I, uh, from Alcorn. Mm -hmm. And were you drafted in the NFL? I was, I was drafted to New York Giants in the ninth round uh, in 1980. Uh, unfortunately for me, 
uh, I got cut. I think of like five minutes left to go before deadline, cut line, and uh, I got released. And then I went back to school to work on my masters, and I worked as a coach there on the staff there. And then the following year, uh, Coach Gibb, and I think in March uh, of that year, '81, I want to say, uh, Coach Gibbs got picked up here uh, to be the next head coach. And uh, I think shortly thereafter, a guy by the name of Dick Myers called me and said, "We want you to come in uh, as a, as a free agent." So. Uh, that's how my uh, career started here at, uh, with the Redskins. Now, were you immediately designated as a blocking back when you came to the Redskins? No, I was not. Um, oh, man, that was a, a long process. A uh, process where as I came into camp, there was about, man, there was like five number one draft choices in the, in the group. John Riggins, uh, Joe Washington, Ike Forte, Buddy Hardiman. It was it was so many guys. And one of the things I could do that you know those other runners didn't want to do was block. And so every time Gibbs called a play, you know, in training camp at that time, you know, to run a play, those guys with the run, I wanted to block. And so every time I got in there, I was like 210 pounds. I was just knocking the crap out of somebody. And one day he said, "Look, you get out." Let somebody else get in there and start blocking, and you run the ball. And that's how I kind of name, I, you know, I got designated to start blocking in training camp as a rookie. That's a great story. Yeah. So you told us about training camp, and Otis, Absolutely. we want to hear more. Mm -hmm. So we will hear more from Otis Wansley when Redskins Chronicles returns. And we're back, Redskins Chronicles, joined by Otis Wansley. Otis, you were just telling us about training camp in 1981. So talk to us about that first year playing. Oh. Uh, that first year, it was, a uh, I man, very challenging, especially the beginning of the year. When the season started, actually, we was going to, uh, you know, terrible time. It, it was like, we was like 0 and 5, and we was just trying to, you know, trying to do some things. But one of the good things about that year in the beginning was, I, I think we was ranked number one in the National Football League uh, in passing yardage. You know what I mean? We was really, really lighting the, light, lighting the uh, you know, the yardage is up and scoring point, but we wasn't scoring enough to win, you know what I mean? So, as I understand it to be, don't quote me, is that when we lost the last football game here at RFK, players got together and began to talk and say, look, man, we, you know, we, we ain't going back tomorrow. You know, we're going, somebody got to know how we feel about this. And so, that was the offensive line. And so, as I understand it to be, that they called Joe Bugle. And they spoke to Joe Bugle about it. And we tired of throwing and we tired of losing. And so the word got back to Joe Gibbs. And so Gibbs said, come on in, let's talk about it. We didn't even watch the game from the previous game we lost. Um, you know, he said, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take these five runs and these formations, and we're gonna go to work. And from that point on, that's when we developed a little thing called Riggle Drill. And uh, when that happened, man, we just went on a tear that was, uh, we kind of like got in. We, one of the thing, things we wanted to do, he wanted to make a physical presence uh, by running football. And whenever you come up to basically try to stop it from running football, and that's when we had them little guys they call um, Smurfs mm -hmm. and, and, and Monk, uh, they got behind you and did some, did some scoring. So that's really how we uh, got to establishing the running game. So do you think that? started the momentum for 1982? I really think it did. Uh, starting the Rigo drill uh, was with a lot of physical play. Uh, that's one of the things Joe wanted to be a tough sucker uh, playing for, for the Washington Redskins. That's something that he really, really, we really hung our head on. Now speaking of 1982, of course, mm -hmm. uh, that ended with a Super Bowl win, Super sure. Bowl 17. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, that Super Bowl also uh, included the most famous play in right. Redskins history, right. Reagan's run, Absolutely. fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. And you were part of that. I was part of that. You threw the block, he right. ran behind you. Mm -hmm. Take us through that play. During the course of the week, a uh, guy by the name of Don Bro, which is my running back coach, he always tested me and, and asked me, "Oh, T, what's this? What, how, you know?" And I was always tuned it in to the running game, folks, because that's something I took very personal. Um, and um, we kind of like got in sync, and we call it chip. It's always chip. When, when we first ran this play, it, it was called like an isolation. You know, fullback coming, he go find the linebacker, and you just isolate a linebacker. I can never get there. And so Coach Gibbs said, okay, let's forget about it. Don't call it isolation, we'll call it chip. On your way to getting the linebacker, is there anybody in your way, chip on it. 
And so that's how we uh, became to get you know famous and running that play. The offensive line would never get any um, uh, any penetration. If they didn't get any penetration, and I get a clear path to the linebacker, and anything is in my way to the linebacker, that's who I tuck. But this particular pay in the Super Bowl, um, he's looking at me, and I'm I'm like, hey, coach, I'm standing on the side. I don't know. And so, if you can, you know, if you if you can really find the film and look at this pin, I'm sitting on this, I mean, like halfway, and he's thinking. And so, coach said, tell you what. I set it to the left. And so we set the formation to the left and sent D Clint Didier to the right. And the guy followed Clint. And so when that happens is, I saw immediately uh, focus onto the linebacker and that's clear pass because now the safety is there, which was Don McNeil, I think. And Didier went back. When he went back, the guy followed Didier back and now they gave me a clear pass to the linebacker. And we always said, hey, John, you got the last man. And so that's the man that John had, which was kind of back off and uh, maybe about seven, eight yards. I want to get the linebacker. Typically, I uh, supposed to go around to get the linebacker. But in this particular, this particular play, I went, I dove over the line, which is something you shouldn't, you didn't do. But I went to get him instead of him coming to get me and meeting me. I went and got the linebacker, and John was off to the races. So he nope. was off to the races, and then talk to me about that feeling after you knew that may have sealed the deal. Oh man, it, it was, it was, uh, actually didn't really get a feeling that it was all over, over that we know it was at a great play, a uh, good time doing that, during the game. Uh, but we still on the edge because we, we, you know, we was getting to beat them up pretty good. Um, and uh, we had some more time on the clock and we just started running the football. And at that particular time, the hog was just, just, just eating them up, eating them alive. So during your five years with the Redskins, what would you consider the best year? Oh man. I'd say the 83 year. Um, the 82 year, it was a great year. Um, we start filling out, so we was working together. But that 83 year, the next year, we worked like a machine. Uh, it, it, it was at a point when teams came on the field. The game was over before they came on the field, and we were just really blown. If we got 21 points on you at halftime, before halftime, the game was really over with. Uh, they didn't want to come to the RFK and play. I think we, we did pretty good that year. Well, Otis, we have some footage mm -hmm. from 1983. Ah. Let's take a look. So, Otis, 1983, big mm -hmm. year for you. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite moment, most memorable moment from that year? Wow. Um, I always excited with the fans. And I can remember playing in RFK and um, this time where the bleachers and everything just started rising and, uh, you know, the stand, the fans were saying, we want Dallas. And uh, I, I just, I mean, the hair still rubs up on the back of my head, my neck, man, when uh, we think about playing Dallas. I think whenever we played Dallas, is it's a special moment in, in, in football history whenever we played those guys because we just really, really physically beat them up. So I think one of the things that I, I remember about the game during those years is, is playing Dallas. Speaking of special moments, mm -hmm. you have a very special family member, okay. Roger Mason, who's beloved in this area. He mm -hmm. spent some years in Washington. Does that make you proud? Oh, sure, absolutely. Whenever you you have a child uh, who um, you know watch you play the game, not only watch you play the game, put the same effort that it takes to play the game, and, and then you know live a life dream uh, playing professional sports. That's that's really a dream come true, especially as a player. Not only as a player, as a parent as well. That's great.